Hey guys, it's T from Driftwood Gaming, and I'm here with another RPG Maker MZ Basics tutorial. In this one, we're going to go over the Event Commands page 2. Let's take a look at it right now. So here is our Event Command page 2. We'll do events to show what each one of these things does. And by the end, hopefully you know how to use everything on this page. So let's start with Transfer Player. When you click Transfer Player, you get to choose which map it goes to by clicking this and you can see a preview of each map that you have in your game and decide which map you'd like to travel to. We're going to travel to the overworld map. So you double click on the section of the overworld map that you'd like to transfer to. Or you can also use a designation with variables. So you set the location, the X and the Y location based off of variables and you define the ID of your map by your variables as well. We're going to go with direct designation and you can also choose which direction you spawn on the map. If you choose retain, you will keep the direction that you had when you went into the transfer event, or you could specify down, left, right, or up. And then you can also specify what type of fade happens when you transfer, either black or white. I prefer black because a flashing white screen tends to hurt the eyes if you're playing in the dark. And then you also have none. So let's set this transfer event, and in order for our character to be able to use it, we have to set it up a certain way. So we can do it a couple different ways. We can add an image that the player can interact with, and for this one it's actually animated, so if you use an animated image, check stepping so that it will play its animation. If you choose to have a image that the player should interact with, make sure that the priority is same as characters, and that the trigger is action button. You can use player touch or event touch as well, but generally for this you would use action button. But we're not actually going to do that. We're going to have the player step on this transfer event. So in this case, you can either leave no image or you can have a more appropriate image for the player to step on. So these little portals here would work. Let's grab this green. Yeah, this one. We're going to do this one. And I'm going to put on stepping so that it has its animation. And then in order to make sure that the character can step on it and trigger it, I'm going to change the priority to below characters and I'm going to change the trigger to player touch. So now when the player steps on this event, it will transfer the player to where we specified. Okay, we've been transferred. Let's do a couple other things on this map because we'll go here next. The next thing that we're going to do is set the vehicle location. So this is a great thing to use. Say you're in the king's castle and the castle's like, okay, you can use my airship, my dragon, my boat, whatever it is that the king's letting you use. You would want to set the location of the vehicle outside the castle in the water somewhere or whatever appropriate place there is at only after the king says that. So during the king talking event, you would set the vehicle location. That way when the player went into the castle, it wasn't there, but when they come out, it will be where you want it to be. So let's set the airship location via direct designation. Again, you can use variables if you'd like. And we're gonna put this airship right here. After this event runs, the airship will appear. You can also set an event location. It's the same kind of thing as the set vehicle location, except you're able to use any event on the map. You can use direct designation and designation with variables, or you can exchange it with another event on the map. Also, you can specify which direction the event faces, or you can say that it will retain the direction that it was in before its location was set. The next thing that we could use is scroll map. We can't use that for this map because it's not actually big enough to scroll. If your map fits on one screen, it won't do anything. But if you would like to scroll your map, you can specify which direction it scrolls, how many tiles it scrolls, what speed it will scroll at, and whether or not the event will wait for the completion of the map scroll in the amount of tiles that you've specified. We've also used movement routes and talked about this more in depth in a different tutorial, so we're not going to use it right now. You also have the option to have your player get on or off a vehicle. Now this will be useful if you're doing a cutscene and your player is currently on the vehicle and during the cutscene you need them to get off or on the vehicle if they were currently off the vehicle to make your cutscene more immersive. I'm thinking Final Fantasy and when you're riding the chocobo around and after you get off the chocobo or when you go into a certain like region, the player just jumps off and the chocobo runs away. You could do something like that with this. The next section is for the character, and we have 
change transparency so we can choose whether or not our character can be can be seen then we can change our player followers and what this does is if you select off for this and you have your party following you on the map they won't follow you anymore you'll just see the main character you can also gather your party members and this is very useful for events like doors as your players are walking through the door you might want to gather them so that they're not like stuck on the other side of the door and then there's show animation so we're going to actually use this show animation and we're going to use it on the event that we have on the map so this event and we're going to show yeah that's cool so we've chosen this event the animation confusion and we'll select wait for completion when this comes up in the event it should play the animation on the map above the event that we're making right now the next one is show balloon icon so we'll do that as well we're going to do it on this event and we're going to use the heart icon also we're going to wait for completion And then if you'd like to erase the event, you would select this. This is very useful for events that you would like to play each time your player is on the map, but only once. Because if you erase your event, it won't function on the map until the player transfers off the map and then back onto it again. So the next thing that we're going to do is show picture. You have to choose a number for your picture. You could choose any number that you want up to 999. If you designate that a picture is a certain number, you can't use that number again on the map for another picture. Say if I made my picture number one and I want to show a dog and then later on I designate picture number one is a cat, that won't work. You would have to designate the cat to be picture number two or some other number. So let's pick an image. The origin position is defaulted to upper left and that is where the origin point of the picture is as it's drawn on the screen. But if you would like the origin point to be in the center of the picture, then we're going to switch this to center in the drop box. We're going to stay with the upper left origin. In order to position the picture, you would use direct designation. You have an X and Y coordinates and you just enter it into this box. This goes by pixels and not by tiles. So we're going to see what 200 by 200 looks like. You can also designate with variables. You could change the scale by modifying this width and this height section here. And then you have some blend options here. You can change the opacity anywhere from 0 to 255. And you have four blend modes to choose from. Normal, Additive, Multiply, and Screen. If you don't know what these look like, I encourage you to try them out. Now we're going to move the picture. So we want to move the picture we already showed. We're going to keep the picture number one. There are four different easing choices that we have. Constant speed, slow start, slow end, and slow start and end. I want to see what that one looks like. We're going to keep the origin in the upper left. Probably best to stay consistent for the same picture. And I'm going to move this to the X coordinates of 400 and the Y coordinates of 400 pixels. I'm going to keep the scale and the blend the same. The duration will dictate how long it takes for the picture to move from one point to the other. So I'm going to say two seconds and wait for completion. Now after it gets to where we want it to go, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit. We're going to use picture one again. I'm going to set the rotation speed to 60. You can go anywhere from one to 90. Then lastly, we can tint the picture and you can play with these sliders and make any color that you'd like or you can choose from some of the defaults that are included. I'm going to just change the slider and make something funky. Yeah, that looks good. Again, we're using picture number one and we'll make this happen over the course of two seconds as well. And finally, we'll just erase the picture. Make sure that you designate the correct picture in the section. Now we've already used weights, but we'll go ahead and put a weight in here just for fun. If you'd like to make your event pause or wait for any reason, and in fact, actually, it's a very good tool if you're using a lot of parallel events or um, automatic events or repeating events, it's a good idea to put a, a few frames of a wait in between so that the game has some time to process everything that it's doing. Typically, you would use a three frame wait, which you don't notice in the game. It happens so fast. It helps to keep the load to a minimum. And then we can fade out the screen, which would turn the screen black, and we can fade it in. 
So if we don't put a weight between this, this is going to happen incredibly fast. I'm going to actually add a weight in between here of mm, 12 frames. We should be able to notice with 12 frames. And then we can tint the screen. And again, there's some sliders and some settings. Let's tint it to sepia and make it take a second to finish. And we can flash the screen. And this looks good. We'll just stick with the default and have it flash for a second. And then we can shake the screen. And of course, I want more power. So we're going to do power nine and speed nine. And we'll do it for about two seconds and wait for completion. And then finally, we'll set a weather effect. I really enjoy the rain effect, but you also have st storm and snow. Let's have some heavy rain roll in. And we'll do that for two seconds as well. In the next section, we'll do some things with audio. Usually when you set your map, you'll have a background music that's playing throughout the entire time that a player's on your map. But we have some custom options that you can use in the event commands on page two. We're gonna overview those. When you go into your map and you already have background music playing, you can save your background music, fade it out, play a different background music for as long as you'd like for your cutscene, and then fade that out, and then replay the original background music, and it'll all seem together very nicely. You can also play background sounds, and we've seen this interface before, but let's just take a look at it. We have some options here like city, clock, darkness, drips, and this gives some atmosphere to your maps. You can preview what they sound like by hitting the play button here and stop them with this button. You also can set the volume in which they play in your event and the pitch and the pan. Pitch will make it sound much faster if you go this way and much slower if you go this way on the slider and pan makes it sound more on the right if you go this way on the slider and more on the left if you go this way. You can also fade out your background sounds. Then you can play music effects. Music effects are more short-lived music type effects. And you could do things like uh, music for your inn, uh, game over music, fanfare. So if you've won a victory or uh, somebody joins your party, you might use something like this. Defeat, if you have a bad moment in a cutscene, you might use something like this. It has the same options as the other audio types. You can also play sound effects. And these are more, ver they're very short-lived sounds like opening a door or knocking on a door or hitting a bell. They don't last very long. Let's listen to a few. You can also stop your sound effects using this selection. And then finally, you can play a movie. There's a couple things to note when you want to play a movie in RPG Maker. You're able to use two movie file formats. One of them is .web M, and the other one is .mp4. If you use mp4, it needs to be h.264 encoded. I went ahead and put a WebM movie in my movies folder in the game file, and I'll show you that. In your game folder, you have a movies folder, and that's where I put my movie. After you put a correctly encoded movie file in that folder, and you select this on the event commands, the movie should show up in this little window. So we are going to finish off by playing a movie. Let's watch this crazy event we just made. Okay, and that was the movie. That's it for event tab two. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel and come hang out with us on the Discord. We have a lot of fun there. Next time we're gonna be going over event commands tab three. I'll see you guys later. Bye.